Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through and reviewing Solus OS Linux. We'll first explore its contents and everything it has to offer with its default desktop environment and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. So I've uh, started out by going through the desktop and my first impressions are that it resembles and has the feel of Android OS, at least with its default desktop environment called Budgie. The desktop is very minimal as you can see nothing going on here it's an uncluttered background and besides having this uh, beautiful landscape in the background which is some mountains uh, there's nothing really there let's go ahead and look and see what other uh, backgrounds they have real quick so if you right click and you hit the change backgrounds you actually get many different options on the left hand side much more than just the background but let's go ahead and find something else here real quick well, I kind of like this one, so I'm going to go ahead and select that one and kind of look at it here. That's pretty cool. I like the reflection in the water here. So let's uh, look through some of the operating system components here and get a feel for what's included with the operating system. If uh, we look at the bottom right here, we see a little taskbar. And the taskbar has your uh, current LAN connection or wireless connection, I assume. And then uh, you have notifications as well as your battery life. You can turn up and down the volume. Then you can also power on, hibernate, or suspend the system, as well as log out. Pretty sure you can select between users, possibly. So it has a log out as soon as you hit this little up arrow here. And if we continue on, of course, you got the time. But what's a little unique is this little button here on the very far right. If you click on this, it actually brings out some applets or what looks like widgets. I don't know if you can install multiple widgets, but it does have a few here. Uh, this is a music player here, as well as turning up and down what seems to be the microphone, maybe possibly even recording with that microphone. And then at the top, you have a calendar that you can use. You can also select notifications in the top and see notifications if you have any. So any updates and uh, various apps that may send you notifications will be in here. We can go ahead and exit out by simply clicking back on the desktop or, of course, hitting the button at the bottom once more. Some other things we can look through here at the bottom left, you'll see some options as well. Uh, Rhythm Box, a music player. Then you have a GNOME MPV, which is just a video player that uh, comes default with Solus OS. Uh, launch Firefox, so you can launch an instance of the Firefox browser, which comes standard. Uh, launch their file browser, or go ahead and launch their software center, so you can download more software if you'd like. Then if you click on the matrix dot array here you will see uh, subcategories as well as a search bar and then some uh, applications under those subcategories right now we have all selected so you'll get every single application that's available to sell us also if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today please take a moment and subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews in the future so this distribution Solace has its own custom desktop environment, Budgie, as you can see here, which is a very simple environment for home computing. Also, the default desktop environment comes with most everyday software that you would uh, use, including the browser, which is Firefox, and Office Suite, which I believe they have Libra in here. Let's go look real quick. Office. Yes, the Libra Suite and other multimedia apps, such as the Rhythm Box and the GNOME MPV. So you can watch uh, different types of multimedia. They do also have a little focus on uh, developers as well as content creators and gamers. There is support for those communities as well. So it makes it a, a very nice encompassing distribution. And with all that being said, Solus really allows everyday users to do the things that they really like and enjoy, such as reading documents, watching videos, sending emails, and browsing the web. Of course, you can tailor it to your own needs because it's a Linux system, but it does come with most of the basics. So let's go through some of these subcategories real quick so you can get a feel of what they have on here. So in accessories, you have a calculator, the file browser, as well as a 
typical text editor, gedit. Then for graphics, you have a couple options here, such as the photos and the Libra Draw. It's interesting that that's in the graphics subcategory. Not sure that that makes too much sense, but that's okay. Uh, the internet, so uh, you have the Thunderbird option, Firefox, HexChat, haven't used that before. Office we already talked about, LibreOffice. Sound and video we all as well talked about. Then in your system settings, you have all the possible operating system settings that you may want to change, such as uh, hardware options and uh, the background, if you really want to change the background like we did before. Uh, mouse and touchpad sensitivity, networking, all that good stuff, even users. Uh, system tools, just some basic tools that you can use for your system. Of course, Terminal does it all, so you can always go to this option and do anything that you need to from there as far as the system goes. Uh, it also comes with Gparted. Most uh, Linux distributions come with Gparted, uh, so I would expect that. Um, if we go to Universal Access... It looks like it has an on-screen keyboard for those of you who need to use that. And uh, utilities come with a passwords save feature as well as help documentation. And you can look at your disks and what the current usage is. Uh, other things here you can select from print settings. So not much more there. We're going to go ahead and go through these three options. If you right click, we already did the change background. We know that what that brings up. If you hit the display, you get a few less options here. I think it uh, goes and defaults to a specific category out of all the settings. And as you can see here, you can change the type of orientation and the resolution. And there's also a night light that you can turn on and off. If you go back, you'll see that you get back to the settings. So again, like I said, it was a subcategory that it took you to. You can also go to settings and it should take you back to where we were just at. And it does. So now you can go ahead and select from the full range of settings. And you have your typical settings. Again, you can turn notifications on and off. Background we already talked about. There's uh, sharing as well as the sound and power network options. Anything that you can think of, it's all in here. So we'll exit out of this. Now one thing I noticed was if we go to change background versus the settings, it's the same page. I don't know why they didn't just condense that into one. I think it makes more sense just to go ahead and make it one. I know it's two different things that you might want to do, but might as well just make it settings, in my opinion. Go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you're in this far, it really does help me out. Another thing I'll explore real quick is the file browser. We tend to use this quite a bit, so it's nice to see it and get a feel for it. Like I was saying earlier, uh, it has a little bit of a feel of Android. Kind of the colors, I think, is what really makes it feel like uh, an Android operating system. Some of the more bubbly icons and, um, you know, again, the, the dark tone here. Just kind of kind of feels different than some of the other operating systems that I've used before, especially Linux distributions. So we have the typical uh, desktop documents, downloads, music, and all the other folders for the home. And this is the home for whatever user that you're logged into currently. You'll have multiple homes if you create multiple users. Uh, some stuff you can do is make uh, searches out of your folders that are currently existing or files that you have and if you hit the drop down you can go ahead and filter in more depth if you would like then if you hit that and go back you can also change the type of layout of the documents in your file browser so you can either make it the larger icons or a list of icons and names and then with the three dots here, you can go ahead and increase the size of your icons. So it does help. It looks like it defaulted back. And it's interesting that it defaulted back to 50%. So it looks like it comes standard with 50%, which is interesting. And then another thing I've noticed is if you go ahead and do the grid, now you can up it to 200%, it seems like. And that's the default. But if you hit the button, it actually resets to 100. So just interesting. Anyways, you can set the visible columns that you have for your file browser. You can check whether or not you want to show the hidden files in the system. Enter a location manually or reload the file browser. 
Some other options is you can make tabs as many as you want here. If you want to have multiple tabs and search the file browser that way. The file browser is just like any other. Uh, one thing I do not see is networking, so I wonder if uh, this other locations is that. And uh, it does seem like it is uh, the other locations is really where the networking tab exists. If you want to connect to a server, you can enter it down here and hit connect. If you hit this, it might make some suggestions for ones that are already available. Hitting the top left here icon, you can go ahead and select between a new window and some shortcuts and preferences for the file browser. We'll go ahead and exit out of here. I think we've uh, looked through this enough. Another thing I like to take a look at is their terminal, since that's a very important tool. So let's go ahead and start that up real quick. And what I can see in here is it does have a transparent background, which I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, it is very dark, so it probably works in most cases. One Another thing I see is that the host name versus the username, they're two different colors, so they get distinguished fairly easily. The text is white as you type in here, so let's do a command like sudo su, so we log into the super user, put in our password real quick, and the user remains the same color even though now you're a super user. Some Linux distributions uh, change that to red, and it does tell you where your current location is. I like that. That's very nice to have. I also like the fact that the text does show up in white so it's really easy to see here. I wonder if they have H top. They don't. Or top. They do have top. So let's just kind of look through top here and as you can see it's fairly good as far as the terminal with the white text. You can It really is highlighted because of the black background. Although it's transparent if you might be had a white background you might have some trouble seeing some white or gray text. I'm sure you can change that in the preferences somewhere here if you would like to do that for the terminal. But it's just one of those things that I like to have. Uh, you can see all the processes running, the CPU consumption as well as the memory consumption at the moment not very high. Uh, only about, it's juggling between, I don't know, 3 to 6% on the uh, CPU as well as, you know, 3% on the memory usage. So. Plenty of available resources here. You can see some other things like the priority and the nice number as well as the virtual memory, shared memory, uh, what user started the task and uh, what the current process ID is. So other things in terminal up here, it seems like you can set some type of a title. Interesting, let's just try home see what that does. Oh, it looks like it just changes the title here at the top. Let's see if it changes anything else. What I'll do is exit out of top here and just do LSAL. Okay, I don't see anything else changed. You can also start a new tab if you want. They have very big tabs which you can read out exactly what the tabs say. So as you can say, see here, we renamed this tab to home, which I guess is kind of nice that you can rename those tabs and uh, the current terminal that you're using so you can make note of what you're doing in each one. That's actually a very nice feature. You can also select all or go change preferences of the terminal. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the color and stuff like that, I'm sure you could do it somewhere in here. There's also help and some other things like increasing the size I'm sure is an option. So you can see the text a little better. Let's see if we can find that real quick. zoom in right here so you can also do it through control plus plus if you'd like so now you can really see the commands that are being listed again I, I do like the font I do like the color the only thing that I think could be improved on is the transparent background we'll exit out of terminal I think we've looked at that quite extensively when you close the terminal it says that there are some processes running already um, that it'll close and kill all, all of them well the interesting part is that you don't get an option to uh, not have this come back up uh, the next time you use it. So um, I'm going to hit close window, but most distributions actually have that option. 
And another thing that I've noticed is you cannot highlight in the background so you won't be able to select multiple items. And with that being said, most operating systems, especially Linux distributions where you can't highlight the background means you can't actually put anything on the background. So let's go ahead and try putting something there. We'll go into the file browser and hit on the desktop. Let's see if we can create a new folder here. Uh, we'll call it test folder. Create that and in the background, of course, there's nothing there. So the test folder cannot be dragged to the background, nor can you access it from the background. I don't necessarily like how that is. Uh, I, I do like being able to put my important documents and files on the desktop directly so I can reference them right away as soon as I turn on my operating system. So that's just something to note. And at this point, I think we've explored the basic layout of Solus enough. So we'll go ahead and take a moment to give it some ratings here. Uh, Solus isn't very popular, but it is climbing in the ranks. And as far as I can tell, is very user friendly. It comes pre-installed with what most everyday users need and want. So it gets a popularity rating of six out of 10. It's simple to use and install, especially for beginner users. Their installer really does a great job of walking you through step by step. It also has its own custom desktop environment and deploys some of the other popular ones like XFCE and Mate. It does give users a choice while downloading the Solus image of which one they want. This makes it a little easier to transfer from Windows. If you need a similar layout to Windows, it's available. I'll give it a user friendliness rating of eight out of 10. Solus OS is an independent distribution, so it tailors itself to beginner users in supplying them with the tools they need to get home computing done. They aren't focused on the performance aspect, but it works perfectly fine in most cases. So I'll give it a performance rating of six out of 10. Solus OS is not based off of any other distribution, which that doesn't allow you to utilize some of the other communities out there for support or packages. So it only gets a features rating of six out of 10 since it has to maintain its own system and can't lend from others. Finally, since it's an independent distribution and it's not based off of any other distribution, it's going to have a hard time keeping up and keeping users intrigued with its updates. Hopefully they do great because it's a nice operating system, but I'll give it a sustainability rating of five out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 31 over 50. I hope you enjoyed the review and walkthrough of Solus OS. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair and if you have any suggestions, comments, or questions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.